detail. He writes dissecting uh, so that we can have a clear understanding of what is truly happening in the context of the Word, the Scripture, the journey. And Luke's unfolds for us a tremendous story, a tremendous story of healing, both physically and then eventually spiritually, holistically. We share together in this gospel because we have a colony of people who are castrated from society. They aren't allowed to be a part of the mainstream because of their disease called leprosy. We find them being marginalized but we see something greater. We see God being revealed. So no matter how far the church becomes, one thing we have to do is make sure we preach and teach Jesus. Let me say that again. I don't think it, one thing we have to do is make sure that we preach and teach Jesus. Live according to his precepts. He's always the one. So come on and turn with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. Come on, Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. I want to share with you verses 12 through 19 from the New King James Version. I was unable to get away from the scripture for the last two weeks. Not sure what the Lord wanted me to do to revisit this text. And here we are on this Sunday morning. I um, want you to share with me again Luke's gospel. Um, and as we move forward, I, I just want to say this to you. you know, love is seeing yourself the way God sees you. Love is seeing, your way, seeing yourself the way God sees you before you make all the necessary changes. <laughs> Love is seeing yourself the way God sees you before you make all the necessary changes. That is how God loves you. He doesn't wait until you get a perm. He doesn't wait until your mascara is on perfectly. He doesn't wait until you have worked out your biceps, triceps, and now you are a, a picture display, a model of one who exercises. The Lord says, I love you while you were thin, bald, skinny, heavy, tall, short. I love you when you at your worst. Who can ever turn away from a God like that? Why not appreciate a God who at your worst loves you as though you're at your best? Not even the Sadducees, the Pharisees, priests, bishops, pastors, all the slew of titles we carry no one else could have done that but Jesus. <laughs> the church is weakened because people want the preacher to replace Jesus. <laughs> and the preacher can never, ever replace the Savior. As marvelous as you are as a wife, you could never replace Jesus. You can do some things that he can do, but you can't replace Jesus. And vice versa. Let's share in this word of God together. 
says, then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers. They stood afar off. As they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and went with a loud voice, glorified God. He fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. He was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? He said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And the church said, Amen. to the reading of God's word, may be seated. Jesus said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not others that I have done something for? But why is this one foreigner, Samaritan, the only one who's come back to appreciate me? Were there not nine others who obeyed me and walked and received healing, but only one out of the ten will ever rejoice and thank me for what I've done. Ten in a colony of leprosy, ostracized because of their disease, much like the AIDS epidemic in the 80s and 90s put fear in the hearts of people. The many who walked with HIV and AIDS felt castrated by society. They felt as though, and some made them feel that this was a punishment from God for their sinful actions. If that be the case, and God is no respecter of person, and there is no sin higher than the other sin, I wonder how others got away. Because the truth be told, we all have sinned, and we all have fallen short of God's glory. This particular scripture unfolds with a colony of lepers who find themselves excommunicated from the average community. They have been pushed out because of their condition. They are no longer welcome because the bacteria uh, that is now so unique has reprogrammed their bodies. That now there is an outward showing of some disease that makes their limbs fall off or their skin becomes ashy and white to the point that they could not engage in normal activity. I'm quite sure back then they would have loved to have just been able to tweet. To send a message to family members that they were disconnected from. I'm quite sure they would have loved Facebook Live simply to capture a moment that I'm struggling but I'm okay. I'm in a colony of people who are like me. and We all have been pushed out of community, pushed out of society because of our condition. I wonder how they would have felt if they could just take a quick snapshot of themselves, we call selfies, and just send that selfie to family members and friends and let them know I haven't talked to you in 10 months, but I'm still alive and still hoping that my disease is cured. Can you imagine 
having to be on the outskirts of a community in which you grew up in, but now you can't play with your children, you can't kiss the forehead of your wife, you can't hold the strong hand of your husband because they are in a place of total disconnect. This particular scripture lets me know that what God does with this colony of lepers is what he can do in every, every community. If the community is willing to live outside and beyond its personal environment, many of us have become victims to our circumstances or our environments. We have become individuals who have fallen in line with where we've been placed. But God says, because of who I am, I will give you authority and power and opportunity to live beyond your conditions, beyond your fragmented historical life. That it does not matter about your lineage because I am creating in you a new beginning. And your sons and your daughters will have the opportunity to give from their bosom the spirit of a liberating God, a God who doesn't just sit high, but a God who actually comes to where you are. This is a particular great sermon because the text really unfolds unto us not only the attitude of those who are crying unclean, but it also unfolds unto us the mercy and the grace of a Jesus who's coming and he's busy and his schedule is short because he only has three years to really perfect ministry, to let the world know that I have come as the light of the world, the salt of the earth. I've come to set the captives free. Three and a half years to change the trajectory of the world. Three and a half years to change the format of sin, depression, oppression, fragmentation, church life that captivated religion but never freed people in relationship. Oh, y'all gonna pray with me? Y'all gonna pray with me today? I just need to pray us today. This, this disease, this disease that kept them running back and forth trying to find out how to be cured. Leprosy left their bodies vulnerable, severely hurt and in pain, fatal infections, loss of sensation of nerve endings, and this disease would take some 30 years to run its course. Can you imagine 30 years to deal with this condition? 30 years when you couldn't walk into city again, you could not hold anyone's hands who looked differently than you, you had to stay here. This disease left them wounded, not only physically, but psychologically and spiritually. Can you imagine having to leave your family, not be able to play catch with your son, not going to your daughter's first recital, not being able to rock them anymore or watch your grandchildren walk for the first time or call your name Papa. Oh, I'm sorry, Gigi. <laughs> to call your name, to, to miss all of these wonderful things of life that many of us take for granted, but yet they're ostracized because of their condition. Can you imagine how it feels? Well, the church has a type of leprosy. The church has a type of leprosy in the sense that there are too many individualized groups and not a unified church. We divide ourselves from the haves and have nots. We divide ourselves from those in certain ministries and those with certain leadership or ecclesiastical titles, but yet we are missing one important factor that all of us need God. I, 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 found, I, found this, I found this clip. I found this clip. It says, I shook my family's tree. We're going to put it up in a moment. 
I, I, I shook my family's tree and this is what happened. Because I want to show you something in this clip because it is interesting because this is why as believers we cannot look down, we cannot separate ourselves by denomination because God does not care. And I love this. It says, I shook my family's tree and a bunch of nuts fell out. Let's be real, all of us have some nuts in our family tree, and we might be that nut. But all of us got some things that God is still working on to get rid of, thank you, working on that we might mature, that we might grow into whom he has called us to be. I need for you to help me with this sermon today because this colony of lepers perhaps represented people who had issues but cried unclean. Can you imagine their pain? They were cut off from people and from family. They were cut off from community and government. But here it is. They found out that hope was alive. They cried unclean. Every time people would get close, their words were unclean. It was obvious that they had something unclean about them. So for those of us who have the not-so-obvious stuff, let us all cry out right now, unclean. Let us all cry out right now, unclean. Because all of us might have some visible and some might have some covert, subliminal things that make us or make us look like we have leprosy. But, but they kept crying unclean. I want to just share with you quickly, and I'll get you out of here, because it says that as evolving as they were, their leprosy continued to get worse. And they would cry out, unclean, unclean, which means get away from me. Don't touch me. Don't let me get close to you. And I'm afraid that even though while we have social media and it is powerful, a powerful tool, too many of us are learning how to interact through devices and not through personal conversations. God is not a God who wants to respond to us by text message. Because we are losing personal interaction with people, the ones that God has created us to walk with and talk with. God has created for us to understand each other and love each other. And it's hard to touch a person when you have a smart device between you. Y'all going to help me? This is... Man cried unclean. Ten people cried unclean, unclean. They cried this until, until they heard that Jesus was coming to town. Thing I want to share with you today is that no matter how dreadful you are, that we have to get this message to every community, whether it's a poor community in poverty, whether it's a middle class, or whether it's an upper scale community, this word will affect all of them. This whole thing is the fact that Jesus is willing to come to your community. But sometimes the church doesn't welcome people who are different. Sometimes the church is just as bad as the people who put lepers out of the community because they don't act the way we act, dress the way we dress, talk the religious talk. Do you not realize that many of us would never accept Jesus if he would come today? I want to share with you, now, and I believe you'll get this today. That every time they saw people, they cried unclean. But I want you to look at this verse, verse 13. Jesus entered the city. He met 10 men with leprosy who stood afar off. Please look at this, because verse 13 now says that when they heard about Jesus, they lifted their voices and they changed their expression. Okay. Verse 13, they cried unclean, unclean. This is their ritual word, unclean. This is what they had to say when so-called normal people came around. Unclean, unclean. I've got some things that God has yet not straightened out in my life. 
unclean. Now, I dare let you know right now that I know how it feels to be unclean. I know how it feels to cry unclean because people won't let you forget who you used to be. But I've learned in the last 28 years that when anybody reminds you of your past, you ought to just take a 10-minute praise break. A 10-minute praise break and just say, God, I thank you that they are witnesses of my transformation. I've learned through discipline not to allow the words of the used to be people in my life bother those who are coming in my life who are my futuristic people to disturb me, to distract me of what I used to be. But every time they remind me of what I used to be, I give God the highest praise. moment in which we come to church I got to see you see make you see this difference with people that cried unclean 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 but I look at verse 13 for a moment because in the verse 13 for a moment the Bible talks about it says but when they heard about Jesus they cried Jesus master have mercy loose me and let me go When they lifted their voices, they cried out a new word, Jesus, Master, listen, don't miss this, have mercy on me. When they saw people, they cried out, unclean, unclean, unclean. But when they saw Jesus, they cried, Jesus, Master, have mercy on me because these people can't give me what I expect you to give me and I need you to override the uncleanness of my life and I need you to hear my petition of desperation because I'm tired of being an outcast I'm tired of being marginalized I'm tired of being just a one person who cried out unclean have mercy I love this text because this text reminds all of us that we have not gotten to a place where we should not be reading God's word. You can't afford not to study to show yourself approved. You can't afford not to pray every day and talk to your heavenly father. You cannot afford to sing God's song in a strange land. You cannot afford to allow the Holy Spirit to wrap you up in the bosom of his arms. You cannot afford to tell God, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. You can't afford that. You can't afford to go one day without prayer. Okay. Help me somebody. You cannot afford to go one day allowing the enemy to attack you and you don't have the whole armor of God on. That's why every morning you get up, when you brush your teeth, make sure you got the full armor of God on. So when the enemy comes at you, the enemy will not win over you on this day. Why? Because I'm crying out, Master Jesus, have mercy on me. The world sees my condition, but Jesus sees my possibilities. Okay, this is too much on Sunday morning. I gotta close two more man a minutes. The world wants me to keep crying out, I'm in need, I'm in need, I'm in need. But Jesus says, stop complaining and ask me for what you want. For you have not because you ask not. He's waiting and knocking at your door, wanting you to ask him for what you want him to do in your life. I dare you to take a 10 second break right now and just scream and tell God, I need your help. 
I need your help. I need your help. I need your help. I need 10 more people. Open your mouth and scream and say, God, I need your help. Master Jesus, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. They don't understand my worth. I'm asking you to have mercy on me. They don't understand my future. I'm asking you to have mercy on me. They don't understand my strengths. I'm asking you to have mercy on me. They don't understand my vision. I'm asking you to have mercy on me. This is so amazing. And I don't mean to get emotional, but when I think about the goodness of the Holy Spirit on this day, my soul rejoices. My soul rejoices because I feel like David. I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Tap your neighbor one time as a neighbor, stop crying unclean and scream, Master Jesus, have mercy on me. Stop replaying your past. Stop replaying your wounds and your abrasions. Stop rehearsing all the bad stuff in your life. Cry out, Master Jesus, have mercy on me. Stop complaining about those who left you and give God praise for those who stayed with you. I'm sorry, it's time to go, I'm tired. But God is saying, I'm not looking for complainers. I'm looking for people who will trust me. Now look at our text. I'll be finishing in one minute in a minute. He heard them cry out to him. And Jesus Christ did not let them rehearse their story. How many more times are you going to rehearse your victimization? We have heard it. It's been to the dry cleaners and back. But this is the day in which you listen to God's word. His word says, go show yourselves to the priest. Are y'all ready for the close? The priests were the only ones who could validate you as being healed or cleansed. But the word says that on their way, I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional. On their way, where God, can't you do it now? Why must I walk? Why must I trust you? Can't you do it now? Why? Why must I go and show myself to the priest? The Lord's word told them, go. So, what God says, I'm waiting for you to move outside of your comfort and trust me. Okay, tap your neighbor one more time and say, neighbor, it's time to move. God says, go show yourselves to the priest. And, and, and as they were walking, the word says, as they were walking, something happened. Can I tell you what happened? Can I let y'all go? Can I tell you what happened? As they were putting their faith into action, because nothing happens if you never move. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when you put your faith into action, which means I'm believing God for my healing before I have my surgery. Okay. As they were walking, the word says they got healed. You will not get what you need from God if you stay stagnant. Tell your neighbor, drop off that baggage and move on. And if need be, carry the baggage with you because along the way, God is gonna command you to liberate yourself from the very stuff that's been hindering you from being God's child. Somebody shout, unclean, unclean, but I'm getting better. 
that you miss unclean, unclean, but I'm getting better. Listen quickly, quickly. It's been too long. I'm going to end this thing now. As they walked, as they put faith into action, and they trusted God. You know, sometimes God wants to see how far you trust him when your condition will not immediately change. This word is for someone right here. God is saying, I'm going to do it, but I want to see how long you trust me. Will you trust me while nothing seems to change? Uh-uh. I need some single people. Would you trust me being single and not go chasing stuff that is beneath you? Okay, come on. No, no. Will you trust me? Will you trust me enough to not wait for a person to make yourself look good for? But when you get up in the morning, you look good for yourself. Let's go. Can you trust me with your children when it seems as though nothing is changing with them? They are still disobedient, coming in late, won't obey your word. Can you trust me enough to get out of the way so I can deal with them and their unclean spirit? Can you trust me to walk your way and your path and let me handle what you can't handle and on their way on their way the word says they were healed so church the end of the story is this one came back and said thank you and he fell at the feet of Jesus you never know what God's going to do if you don't put the application in. Okay. Well, I don't qualify for it. I, I love to tell this story. <laughs> I, but, Dick and, but Dick and Gibson, he, I love to tell this story. Whenever I can, I love to tell this story. They told me that I did not qualify to be the pastor of Grove Church 29 years ago. I didn't have all the, all the stuff, but they gave me a chance. They gave me a chance. And even knowing I didn't meet all the qualifications, I still sent my resume. It wasn't two pages. I believe back then it was on a page, it was on a half a page. I, ain't had, I had nothing on my resume other than I was an insurance man. but God. So I'm leaving you with this. Please don't forget to show God your gratitude. And some of you haven't done it in a while. And God keeps giving you strength week after week, day after day. And you don't take a moment to come back and tell God, thank you. So I'm gonna give you a moment right now to catch up on your praise. But this word says to us, this word says, the one who came back, Christ said, where are the other nine? The other nine got busy. I'm going home to see my family. But this one says, I'm going back because I'm going to need him again. There's a, there's, a, there's a Greek word, there's a Greek word called sozo. So when the man came back, the first group, nine, got physically healed. The second man, the man who came back, the one man who came back, got suzu. Not only did he get physical healing, he had holistic healing. Just tap your neighbor one time. I want Suzu healing. I want holistic healing.
Will you stand on your feet with me as we go? Father, we want to thank you. Grab your neighbor's hand. Father, I'm not praying for myself. But I'm praying for the hand I hold. We're all unclean in some way. So, Lord, I don't feel inferior to the hand I now hold. 